I am going to talk about uh, education in schools and uh, how we are contributing to it and how schools and uh, students can be a part of it. So I am uh, going to keep it to the whole core concept of what I have written there being it uh, innovative, simple and learning. So uh, what we do in education is following these three steps. We want to be innovative. Uh, we want to keep it simple and it always has to be learning. Uh, when I say learning, I am not just referring to students out here. I also mean a uh, lot of people who are uh, not students anymore, including us uh, at SPACE and uh, the teachers who are there with the students at the school. So I will reiterate that point again, I will come back to it again. As I said, but before I do that, I wanted to show you something, you know, a very interesting statistic and uh, that also shows how, uh, you know, we have grown and how students are now with us. So I, what I did was I plotted uh, on the graph as to how many students uh, every year are working with us and, uh, you know, how they are benefiting from the education. Now, this is purely uh, the numbers for education. I have not included, uh, you know, all the projects or uh, travel or everything else that we uh, keep doing, I just wanted to figure, concentrate on the uh, education. So interesting thing is that we are growing that, that's I am sure already uh, you know you have come to know about so I am not going to stress on that. What I want to uh, highlight is this dip, I will come to that again, I have another slide that, again this graph again but I want you to remember this dip because it relates to something that I am going to talk about today. As I said, our philosophy is learning by doing. It says I do and I learn. Now this is very contrary to uh, how uh, things work out in schools. Especially if you go back 10 to 15 years, uh, it was not I do and I learn. That's not how, how I grew up in the school. It was not I do and learn. It said I read, I read, I read and then somehow I learn. Somehow I learn it because the parameter for learning was how many marks do you get in your exam, finally. So if I am a good reader, I can remember things, I can reproduce that in the examination hall, I am good. So that's what happened and that's how I uh, was always an average student. So, <laughs> so the, again, so what we are doing is that we say that we learn by doing. I. As an organization, we bring those opportunities where there is a possibility of learning. Learning by doing something your own self and then making something better out of it. So that's what the philosophy that drives us. Innovation is something that we are very keen about and innovation is of the teaching methodology. Now, um, it's not a product, it's, it's not something that I could innovate, it's not iPad, so I can innovate and give it to you and say, okay, this is the product for you. This is something related to education. So the innovation comes in the teaching methodology that we follow and that is where teachers come into the picture because it's not for just for students, it's for teachers. So the whole challenge that we have and we continuously keep um, facing this challenge and I think that's going to be a part of our lives forever is going to be how to make teachers relearn. When we uh, train an educator to be going to the school to deliver astronomy and space science concepts, the first thing that has to be done is they have to be shaken out of their whole, I don't know if I should call it aura, but out of their own framework. So they have to be shaken out of their framework and then put into a curve where they are learning first and then they can go back and tell those students that okay, the whole idea is to relearn. So that's something that we do. Hands-on uh, activities uh, are the core here. As you would see, there are just few pictures that I put together so that you know I could reflect on the hands-on uh, nature of things. These are all different uh, set of activities that we are doing at various places. There is observations happening. This is Jantar Mantar in Delhi. This is a school which has put up a telescope. Uh, this is a girl which has just prepared a comet. Uh, this is the observatory. This is the Aries observatory, Benital. 
And uh, this is a camp, uh, a night out camp we are doing at a resort with kids. And this is one of the girls which is trying to understand light. So what we are doing is, we are doing disruptive learning. Now disruptive is a interesting word to talk about. Because first you have to disrupt and then come to the whole idea that how do I disrupt things? You know, um, it would have been very easy for me to come here, put a few slides, um, talk to you about whatever we do, and then just sit back. So, uh, because we think about it, disruptive learning, I thought how, how could I disrupt the whole presentation itself? So that's something that came to my mind, and I thought, when I say shaking things up, questioning the fundamentals, doing unique things, learning while having fun, what would I do to disrupt something out here? So I thought of a simple plan, and that plan is right there with you. This is a comet. Now I thought that what better way to just reiterate my point, stress on my point is to bring a comet here. This is a comet just prepared right now outside while I started, and this is what happens in the class. So I thought a live demonstration could be the apt thing to do. So this is what happens in the class. We make students do this. And then they learn. They learn about a lot of things. And that is the whole premise. It's very cold. It's made of dry ice. And their hands, I'm sure, will be freezing. Coming back to disruptive, I said I'll come back to my slide there. There's a blip and I circled it right now for your convenience. Why is there is a dip? It has to do something with this disruption. Not this disruption, but the whole idea of disruption. I'll, I'll tell you what the premise is for this dip. These are the times when we started, we were doing education in schools through a model called astronomy clubs. They're called space astronomy club. And uh, we trained educators. We created a module of 10 sessions, which ran through the year. Interested students participated, and they did a lot of activities. And there are a lot of uh, modules, uh, one, two, three students here today, the club students here today. But while we were doing all of this, there came a point here, somewhere in 2009, where we uh, thought that we had to go to the next level. We had to go to a level where we can think beyond what we are doing. We could disrupt our own model of working and come out with something which was far more reaching out to students, more comprehensive, had a better impact in terms of the whole school, and uh, actually deliver astronomy and space science at the school. With the club, we were very successful. It was uh, very well received by people, but it was somehow restricted to people or as say students who were a part of the club. Now getting uh, you know, 100 odd students out of uh, a strength of 2,000 and making them do a lot of things was good, but it was still 100 out of 2,000. So we disrupted. We came out with the concept called uh, Center for Student Excellence Universe in the School. Now this is the concept uh, where we said that clubs are fine. We have been doing clubs, you have been doing clubs. Clubs are fine, now we need to go to the next level. Get your in-house teacher in the school who can do astronomy, space sciences, and bring all of what we are doing to your school at any point of time because you have an in-house resource. So as what happens with any disruption, the first uh, response is always uh, not that enthusiastic. So we had a dip. Uh, you know, we had a fall, I would say, because when you, uh, you know, every penny counts, it's a fall. So we had a fall, and uh, we somehow survived, so we are here. But the point is that uh, it was not the first time that uh, this was happening with us. We started this same, same way, but we had a fall, and people took time. People took time to understand that this is something that is revolutionary in thought, that having somebody like a computer teacher in my school was OK. Having an astronomy teacher in my school was something which was out of the box for them. So they took time. And as you can see, uh, now the graph is up. We are here. So the graph is up. Students do, uh, and schools do realize now, management of the schools now realize that this is the way forward. This is how we can make a difference. 
to the way we are teaching, this is the uh, way forward through which we can actually create an impact where the student goes back home and says to the parent that yes, I did something in astronomy, I know what I am talking about. So that is what we have achieved. And I would like to say it that we are making a dent in the school's universe now. How we are making that dent is that doing practical and result oriented methods, we are using innovatively nature, sky and surroundings, we are sparking students imagination. It's very easy to uh, come to a class and say that this is what it is today, this is what we are going to do today and go back with an assignment. But it's difficult for teachers when they come in the class and say, this is what I think we are going to do today, but I don't know what's going to be the assignment. It's very difficult. As a teacher, if you are going to be in a classroom and say that I don't know finally what's going to happen at the end of the session, it's strange. But that, that's something that we want them to do. Let students decide what they have to do. So that is why, because we are able to do these things, the first three things, we are able to lead the pack in bringing the best of the world to the school. Because we are different. We are thinking of something which is not existing in the school psyche. And we have a lot of handy learning tools. This is uh, an astronomy kit. This is uh, for club students. While they join the astronomy club, they get a kit. It has a lot of handy tools to understand astronomy, sky, space, and then uh, they learn. So these kinds of handy learning tools is something that gives them that drive that, okay, this is something in my hand. There is a sort of power in my hand through which I can learn my own self. So uh, that is something that I really wanted to show today while I am presenting. Now this kit is available outside for all our speakers. If you want to have a look at it, you want to take back home, uh, more than welcome. Please uh, have a look at it and uh, do give your feedbacks on it. Now when I said uh, we are doing something which is imaginative, kids are even more imaginating we, and we do a lot of stuff. So we meet astronauts, we celebrate space weeks, we do a lot of solar observations and this is uh, Koj. CB already talked about it, so I am not touching these. This is Koj. This is the place which uh, CB was talking about, uh, Mirzapur. And this is where the near, uh, that, that's the highway, that's the state highway. So this is where the whole watch was created to mark the longitude. Our milestones in education have been uh, many. Very interesting of them, I, you know, I had to put the top few, so I just, you know, restricted this here. We have something called All India Asteroid Search Campaign, another first for India. I'm not sure how many countries actively outside India, and I'm sure my uh, distinguished uh, guests here, speakers here would be able to throw light on that, that how many um, school students all over the world are actively hunting for asteroids. I'm not sure about, but in India it was not happening. Two years back, uh, there was none. And we brought this concept to India, got the school students to first train themselves in using the software and the whole procedure, and then they found asteroids. We had tremendous results. We had done two phases of it. Two years running, we have done this project. And the first year itself, we had a discovery of an asteroid. The one that we just finished, uh, there was even a Trojan discovered. So you can imagine that when you give that sort of freedom, that sort of opportunity into the hands of the child, this is what happens. They can, they are capable, they always were, but now they have the right tool to do it. And that's uh, mind boggling. How many times you come across a kid who says, I'm 14, I just discovered an asteroid today. So that's something that I'm talking about. Then there are other projects. We have something called ISS Earth Camp. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be aware of it. Uh, this is where you actually image uh, Earth using onboard cameras, uh, the ISS. We have something called the Live Internet Telescope Project. Uh, this is a project where remotely using internet, uh, students are actually controlling telescopes. So there are observatories in US where students sitting here in India control the telescope, they get telescope time. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people here know the value of telescope time. That's very hard to get by. So they get telescope time. Yeah, five minutes, all right. So they get telescope time and they actually click photographs of the sky. They're very beautiful images. Uh, I wanted to put all of them here, 
but I knew that you know uh, I would be stopped sometime while I'm speaking this. So I've not put these pictures. We have an online gallery, uh, and uh, you know you can just go Google it, say organization space uh, web gallery, and you will get to our gallery where you will find not just these images but all the images, all the project images that uh, are there with us. Then we have done Helio Desi. Helio Desi uh, very successful. It is a project where we are actually uh, instigating students to uh, come out and chase eclipses with us. So we sponsor kids, uh, we conduct a, a competitive exam, we, and then the meritorious ones are sponsored by us to come with us to the site of the eclipse. So uh, we have taken kids to Turkey, we have taken kids to Russia, we have taken kids to China for all the uh, three, past three total solar eclipses. And, uh, uh, you know, all said and done, we have talked a lot about uh, the eclipse and the whole thrill of the eclipse. Uh, so I'm not going to touch that. But the whole idea here is that we actually get them to actually, you know, do something about it. Get a chance, a golden chance to just get sponsored and see that eclipse at a young age. And I'll, I'll tell you a very interesting story. You know, <coughs> in 2006, when we first started this project, uh, uh, we, we, you know, the project went live and there were registrations happening and everything and there, there was this person, uh, the, you know, uh, a reporter from a magazine who was here, there to, you know, cover the whole story and understand what we are doing. And the first thing that the person asked was that, you know, you do an online exam. So how do you know that these kids are not going to cheat? It's an online exam. You are not there. They might have their parents sitting behind them and they could do all the answers. And I smiled and I said, that's what exactly I want. If I, as a child, could get my parents behind me and say, I want to do this exam of astronomy and tell me the answers. Sit on the other computer, Google while I do my answers. That's amazing. That's what we wanted and that's what we got. So, uh, moving ahead, we have coach, Vamana, cruise, flight, and teacher training programs. Uh, teacher training programs uh, is something that, you know, we are very keen about, we are very uh, happy about. Uh, because that's the opportunity where we actually shake up teachers and say this is uh, where you need to change your thinking and come to the classroom in a different uh, mode altogether. Already talked about asteroid search campaign. As I told you, we are two years into it and uh, we had great success. Ryan International School Rohini, Bal Bharti Public School Pitampura, Bal Bharti Public School Gangaram, Ryan International School Sona Road, Navy Children's School. All these schools are schools of students who have discovered asteroids. Uh, Bal Bharti uh, especially is important because that's the two girls who discovered the uh, Trojan asteroid. Uh, our path breakers has been these uh, schools. Uh, these are schools in the Prastha, uh, Dwarka in Pashtun Vyar, GD Goenka Rohini, Step by Step School Noida in Delhi and Bal Bharti School Pitampura because they are doing something which is with us which is revolutionary and that revolution uh, we call is called uh, Center for Student Excellence, universe in the schools. Uh, it's, it's a very different concept. You know, whenever I go out to the school and talk to management or principals and tell them that, you know, this is something that I propose, the first thing is uh, they do not understand it. That's the first thing that I always encounter. They just don't understand it. They say, how is it possible that, you know, you say, run your own club? Or when you say that you, you, you can do whatever you want to do in astronomy, uh, all the projects that space has it on the website, you can just do all of them. And suddenly they say, how is that possible? I don't believe you. And then I have to take time out with them, tell them that, okay, this is how it gets implemented. We have an educator which will be there in your school all the time and we'll be working very closely with students and run your astronomy club, uh, run your projects, run your events, and then bring out the best of it. So uh, that's what we do at Center for Student Excellence. So coming to my last slide, 2012 plans, uh, transit of Venus, talked about uh, by CB as well. Annual solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, uh, something called outreach centers. Uh, I'll just give uh, one minute to it later. Learning centers and then the center for student excellence. Now these are the key focus areas for 2012. Uh, as I said, uh, we are looking for doing something uh, which is different. So I'm not talking here about, uh, or I'll not talk about here about uh, the experiment part of all of this. For example, eclipses. What I'm going to talk about is how we can actually uh, how we are going to break 
the mold, how we are going to break through that public perception of whether it's for me or not. What we've decided is that for all the uh, phenomena that are happening, transit of Venus, annular solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, we are going to have expeditions. These would be national level expeditions uh, where students selected from all over India would become a part of that expedition. Uh, irrespective whether you have done anything before in astronomy or not, we want uh, schools to come forward and say, this is where I want my school to participate. This is the contingent where I want my school students to be. So each school gives just 10 students. And these 10 students uh, spread over 25 schools. So 250 students would get together, undergo a series of workshops here in India, prepare themselves for the upcoming event, do experiments, and then go to the actual site of the event and then do live experiments. That's the whole idea. And we have built it in the form of an expedition so that it gets the requisite uh, attention, it gets the requisite uh, media attention and people's attention. So this is the whole idea. So uh, we had very good steps here. Uh, you know, the uh, conference has augured very well for me because I could get all of uh, our international speakers to you know, commit in some way or the other towards, you know, uh, giving some knowledge that they have to children. So, uh, you know, Glenn has already done that even, you know, when we were doing the flight. Uh, but now a lot of others have come forward and said that, okay, we are ready to contribute. So, uh, we are going to have those special sessions with educators through them, where the educators learn more. So, this is what we are going to do for the uh, events. Uh, the outreach center is actually the... Uh, Actually, a plan where, you know, a lot of your questions, uh, I think one question while CB was presenting was that I am uh, in Rajasthan or I am in Manipal. How do I get associated? This is the method. Uh, we have something called the Outreach Center where we want you to get associated with us, join hands with us. We do a small, uh, you know, orientation program for school teachers who are already there. And then uh, we try and run astronomy projects, events, etc., and prepare the school for events like these uh, through, uh, you know, a lot of various means. Then we have learning centers. These, these are for people. Uh, in the first presentation, if you remember, I'll just take two minutes. So in the learning center, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sachin already told you while he was presenting that uh, we have a vision that we want to have 100 plus centers 2013. This is what he was talking about. Learning centers, uh, centers where as simply as, you know, in your neighborhood, you could walk in and say, okay, today I have time, I am interested in doing something with astronomy. Uh, I came to know in the newspaper that there is an eclipse coming up. I want to just get in and understand what is going to be in it for me. So that <coughs> neighborhood center where I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, going very far off, uh, approaching my school or uh, going through a lengthy process of any uh, joining, I just walk in and say, hey, I'm interested. What is in it for me? Can you teach me something? So th that is the concept that we're working on. And then, obviously, uh, Center for Student Excellence is going to be the core part of whatever we are doing. Uh, you know, <coughs> another way I explain um, schools that uh, what is Center for Student Excellence when they ask me? I say, you just think that you're just opening a mini space in your school. So whatever we do, we just concise it to the school level and bring it to you. So when I say mini space in the school, that's the best way of you know telling them, okay, this is what you're going to do in the program. So uh, these are our plans uh, for school students. A lot of this is available just outside. You can talk to me afterwards. Our, a lot of people are here, educators are here, and uh, think of enrolling in them. For all our uh, speakers, international speakers, national speakers, uh, I have a request. Uh, we have already laid our cards on the table. Uh, what we want is that you to come forward now and uh, give whatever you can uh, to help it make it very successful. Uh, you could just contribute any ways. It could be uh, experiments, knowledge, uh, something about logistics, something about preparation, something about uh, just about anything. And uh, you know you can contribute to us, and uh, we'll be very very thankful for you uh, for your help and. Uh, that's where I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you so much for bearing with me for the past 30 minutes. And uh, thank you so much.